The Dirty D Season 2 Episodes 4 through 6. They're finally here. We waited about a month for these episodes to drop on Tubi, and some of you have been waiting to hear my thoughts on them. However, I must warn everyone that I might be more critical in my review than most, but that's just how I roll. With that being said, let me start this review by telling you all what I liked about the last three episodes. First, there's Brick getting out of jail. It was very refreshing to see Brick finally getting out of jail. In the first season, Brick was promoted as a big time boss, and to see him locked up with nothing to do for the first three episodes of season two made his character largely forgettable. But in Brick getting out of jail, we get introduced to Breeze, who's Brick's business partner, his lover, and apparently his muscle. We don't get a whole lot of character development for her throughout episodes four through six, but her arrival definitely balanced the energy that was present for the first three episodes. And with Brick being out of jail, we finally get the showdown between him and Malik. It was a little disappointing that we didn't get to see Brick confronting Malik on all the betrayals that occurred, but seeing Malik get shot was long overdue and well deserved. Second, there's India and Ice's romance. Although India is a side character, it was nice to see her get some character development and see her romance with Ice blossom. I thoroughly enjoyed watching India assert her dominance within the relationship and dictate the terms that they had in dealing with Ice's side chick, Brittany. The scene between them, although brief, reminded me of the things that I loved about the first season of The Dirty D. And that brings me to another thing that I liked, which was the overall sex scenes. In my review for episodes one through three, I claimed that the sex scenes in The Dirty D went from West Coast Productions to your average run of the mill soap operas. And this was because the ladies who were part of the main cast wouldn't get naked in the first three episodes of season two. But in episodes four through six, the newer ladies were willing to get topless. And like I said previously, if you're going to do sex scenes in these kind of shows, at least make them look realistic or don't do them at all. If I had any complaints about the sex scenes for episodes four through six, I would say that they were cut a little too short. But let's move on to what I didn't like. First, I thought that the show was packing a little too much into the story. Throughout season two, there were a lot of storylines that either came out of nowhere or that were simply not necessary for the organic growth of the story. For example, Malik's wife coming home after being out of the country and conveniently finding Malik moments after he had been shot was extremely convenient considering that she wasn't supposed to return home for a few months. The romance between the police captain and Keisha's mother was a brief moment of character development for both characters, but after their dinner scene and sex scene, it really didn't go anywhere. Lachey's whole storyline was not only all over the place, but it was extremely unrealistic. For episodes four through six, Lachey was conveniently placed in the scene with Kyra, and she was warned not to tell Terrence about the baby or the abortion, but she did so anyway, which could have resulted in her losing her job and being sued. And I initially assumed that Lachey may have been undercover for some organization and didn't care about her own livelihood, but that's not the case. I guess that Lachey violating her own workplace duties is in line with her character due to how she handled Terrence's paternity test. But her being the prosecutor's sister and her being pregnant by Terrence should have been developments that unfolded over several additional episodes in my opinion. And lastly, the whole storyline of Boom being Keisha's real baby father is really unbelievable at this point. Keisha had already accused two other guys of being the father, so how am I supposed to believe that Boom is the real father now? It's clear that Keisha is a liar and she's for the streets. So second, there's Yaya's fall from grace. In the first three episodes of the season, Yaya came on the scene like a category five hurricane. She asserted her dominance over everyone and everything without breaking a sweat. But throughout episodes four and six, she floated away like a fart in the wind with no explanation as to where she was going or what her plans were for the future. Third, there's this whole internal affairs investigation on the dirty cops. Over the six episodes for this season, the storyline featuring the dirty cops being investigated went absolutely nowhere. It was shocking to see that Officer Marcus was still alive, yet we still don't know who tried to kill him. It was also shocking to know that Malik and Nice were working with IA to take down the dirty cops and other characters on the show. But again, there's really no resolution or appropriate cliffhanger given for the storyline for the next season. Fourth, there were inconsistencies to Kyra's character. In season one, Brick and Kyra were madly in love with each other 
and they had a romance that was a shining example of what black love should be. Kyra was loyal and only dealt with one guy at a time. But for this season, Kyra had no issues letting Terrence clap them cheeks one good time after vowing to be done with him. And she got over Brick pretty quickly before moving on with Sean, only to allow Terrence to come back in her life and propose to her. To me, the developments of Kyra's character over episodes four through six further spiraled away from how she was in season one. And lastly, I wasn't a fan of Brick confronting Kyra about the abortion. We see that Brick turned into the Flash and rushed over to Kyra to confront her about being pregnant. She then tells him that she had an abortion and Brick was mad for a split second, but then he just let it go. And while I'm not a fan or champion of domestic violence, given how Brick laid his hands on Breeze, I expected him to do the same or worse with Kyra, but he didn't. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I was informed that this season of The Dirty D would only be six episodes. And if that's true, if I had to give season to a grade, then it would have to be a C minus for me. And I might catch some heat for this, but it's all coming from a place of love. But I was simply disappointed in the series, and this was partly because season one did such a great job at establishing the characters, giving us an easy to follow story, and injecting gritty and raw love scenes to keep us engaged. Unfortunately, this season doesn't double down on what worked for the first season. Lastly, I just wish that this season had been 10 episodes and that the storyline had been fleshed out a little bit more. But with that being said, I don't want to take anything away from the director, producers, the acting talent, or anyone else that worked on season two of The Dirty D. I appreciate the great things that season two had to offer, and I look forward to watching season three. But this marks the end of my review. Over the next several weeks, I'll be promoting and reviewing a ton of movies on Tubi, and if you like this review, then feel free to check out my other Tubi content reviews. And if you have any comments related to this review or season two of The Dirty D, feel free to leave them below in the comment section, and I'll be sure to reply to everybody. Until next time, stay ready, stay safe, and stay tuned. Peace.